Hi, future GISPs. I'm going to teach you everything that I learned to easily pass the GISP exam so that you don't have to spend years reading textbooks, getting degrees, paying for prep courses, and searching the internet for information like I did. In this video, I'm going to teach you everything I learned about digitization and other manual collection and conversion methods. Digitization and other manual data collection and conversion methods is the first section under the data acquisition category of the GISCI Geospatial Core Technical Exam list of knowledge categories. Let's get started with section 401, digitization and other manual data collection and conversion methods. Digitizing. Digitizing is the process by which coordinates from a map, image, or other sources are converted into a digital format in GIS. Map or image resolution and scale impacts the spatial accuracy of digitized data. Manual digitizing. Manual digitizing involves human-guided coordinate capture from a map or image source. Heads-up digitizing. Heads-up digitizing involves scanning paper documents into digital files. Heads-up digitizing is also known as scan digitizing. Heads-up digitizing. Heads-up digitizing involves scanning paper documents into digital files. Heads-up digitizing is also known as scan digitizing. Automatic digitizing. Automatic digitizing uses automated processes to convert raster data to vector data. Point mode digitizing. In point mode digitizing, the operator must press a button to sample each point. Stream mode digitizing. In stream mode digitizing, points are automatically sampled at a fixed time or distance interval. Too short a collection interval will result in redundant points. Too long a collection interval will result in the loss of spatial data. Minimum distance digitizing. Minimum distance digitizing is a variant of stream mode digitizing that only records a point if it is some minimum distance from the previously digitized point. Undershoots. Undershoots are nodes that fall short of the intended location. Overshoots. Overshoots are nodes that extend past the intended location. Snapping. Snapping is an automated process that repositions digitized points within a specified range of a feature to be coincident with that feature. Node snapping and line snapping are used to reduce overshoots and undershoots. Snapping relies on a snap tolerance or snap distance. Spline functions. Spline functions are used to mathematically smooth lines between digitized points. 
a spline is a set of polynomial functions that join smoothly. Point thinning. Point thinning removes vertices to reduce processing time and file size. Weed distance. Point thinning methods often use a weed distance to reduce the number of vertices while maintaining the line shape. The, the Lang method. The Lang method is a point thinning technique. The Lang method uses a spatting line that connects two non-adjacent vertices in a line. The thickness of the spanning line is the weed distance. Any points that fall within the weed distance of the line are removed. This process removes more points on lines that are not complex or straight than lines that are complex or that have many changes in direction. Skeletonizing. Skeletonizing reduces the width of scanned lines to a single pixel. Registration. Registration is the conversion of digitizer or other geospatial data to an earth reference coordinate system. Primary data. Primary data is data collected for the first time for a GIS project. Primary data may include new digitization from remote sensing or aerial photographs. Primary data can include new GPS or survey measurements. Secondary data. Secondary data is data derived from other sources that were not collected for the specific project the data is being used in. This usually consists of data sets from government entities that weren't specifically prepared for the project at hand. A scanned map is a secondary source because transferring the data between media formats reduces accuracy and detail. A high-quality data collection process should include these four steps. First, plan the project. Second, test data collection in a sample area. Third, check the accuracy of the sampled data. And fourth, collect the rest of the data. There are five types of measurement. Physical measurement, observation of behavior, archives, explicit reports, and computational modeling. Physical measurement. Physical measurement is measurement of the physical properties of the Earth or its inhabitants. Observation of behavior. Observation of behavior is measurement of observable actions or activities of individuals or groups. Archives. Archives are measurements from records that have been collected for other purposes. Explicit reports. Explicit reports are measurements of beliefs people express about things.
Computational Modeling Computational modeling takes measurements from models as simplified representations of reality. Now let's take a look at qualitative versus quantitative data. Qualitative data. Qualitative data is descriptive. Qualitative data consists of non-numerical or nominal values that have no quantitative meaning. Qualitative data is used to group common data for use in non-statistical analysis. Quantitative data. Quantitative data consists of numerical values measured on at least an ordinal level. Quantitative data can be counted. Quantitative data can be used for statistical analysis. Fuzzy tolerance. Fuzzy tolerance is the distance at which two points are considered the same. Cluster tolerance. Cluster tolerance is the minimum tolerated distance between vertices in a topology. Vertices within the cluster tolerance are snapped together. The common feature problem. The common feature problem occurs when the same feature is mapped in different locations from different sources. Possible solutions to the common feature problem are, you could use the most accurate data source, you could weight the sources and use an average location, You could determine the location from other accurate data sources. A GISP should know basic distance and angle measurements and conversions. A U.S. survey foot equals 0 0.3048-00609 meters. An international foot equals 0.3048 meters. It is important to know that the U.S. survey foot is longer than the international foot. One mile equals 5,280 feet or 1.6 kilometers. One kilometer equals 0.62 miles or 1,000 meters. One meter equals 3.28 feet. One meter equals 10 decimeters, equals 100 centimeters, equals 1,000 millimeters. Angle measurements are normally recorded in degrees, but sometimes degree measurements are converted to radian measure for analysis. Radian measure. One radian equals 57.3 degrees. 180 degrees equals 3.14 radians. 360 degrees equals 6.2 radians. Pi equals 3.14 radians. Pi equals 180 degrees. Now you know everything that I learned about digitization and other manual data collection and conversion methods to easily pass the GISP exam. Don't forget to thumbs up and subscribe to my channel so that I can keep helping people pass the GISP exam and achieve the rewarding careers in GIS that they deserve. 
You can also find everything I learned to pass the GISP exam in my book, The Ultimate GISP Exam Study Guide, available on Amazon. My study guide is an easily understandable, comprehensive, graphical, all-in-one resource for passing the exam. You can find the link to my study guide in the description below. Thanks for joining me and congratulations in advance on passing the GISP exam.